brothers. <laughs> That's right. Well, it's going to be great to have a little discussion. It's not going to go too long, but I think it's important to put flesh around some of the ideas of what it is to go to the University of Michigan and why it opens up so many opportunities to go to a great university in a great athletic program. So please share with us. Let's start with you, Wayne, since you're right here. By the way, Wayne just came out with a book uh, that I'm very eager to read. So Wayne, why don't we start with you? Tell us a little bit about your Michigan experience and very, very interesting how you know, crossover sports and all the rest. <clears throat> I just want to say thank you to Colleen for his work here at the uh, museum. And uh, I also want to give a shout out to Jim Harlow before I say anything else. His dad showed up at an event here in Grand Rapids when we started the Adventure Point Scholarship Fund a few years ago. So thank you, Jim, for all of your support to Grand Rapids, to Kent County. I became the county administrator for Kent County, the first African American to become the county administrator for the county of Kent. And it all began as a young child, dreaming of going to the University of North Carolina. My dad was a tobacco farmer and he said, we're moving to Michigan in 1969. I wanted to go to the University of North Carolina, the target. I had no idea that I was going to get recruited by the University of Michigan, Michigan State, Notre Dame, all the other Big Ten schools, the Paul. I went to Michigan. I did not know, by the time I left there, there would be an award named after me, the Women Great Defensive Player of the Year Award that they give out every year to the best athlete on that basketball team. We went to the 1976 finals. We got beat by Indiana. I was the captain of the team. I loved Michigan. I loved the basketball team and the football team. I remember going down the hallway at the athletic department on State Street to see Bo Shimba and Don Kennedy. And uh, those guys mentored me along with Johnny Gore and helped me become a man. So I'm forever grateful for what the Michigan faculty and coaching did for me because I would not be the person that I am today. And it's all in that book, and I'm going to make sure Jim, you get a copy of it from your dad. And uh, my buddy Jim Hackett here, one of the people that uh, inspired me, we were at Steel Case, and he'll tell his story. But uh, he's the wizard. He's the guy that did this thing at Steel Case and then the University of Michigan Athletic Department forward. Uh, he's, he's the big guy, and uh, what a great guy. But I, I, I want you to know how important you are in your, your, your development right now and what you're doing. Because we need leaders. We need leaders after you graduate from college. So we need you to be out on the seat and become the people that we become as poor athletes. And academics, academics as well, as well. So that's my story. I'll leave it there. Well, thank you, Wayman. Jim, you got quite a story. Well, I, I, this is my, this is a brother of mine, Wayman. What was your vertical leap? I don't know. Come on. I, I, I guess I was. Well, how tall were you at the floor? You know, because we've all grown. Six foot one and three quarter inches. Power forward. Half power forward. So this man jumps. You know, Playing power forward on that on the national championship, and then he gets drafted by the Lakers. Yes, and the Redskins. And the Redskins, because Bo wanted him to play football, Jim. He wanted him to be a dual sport athlete, and he could have been an incredible receiver. And I, I hate to turn him down because uh, you know I love Bo, but uh, yeah. that was my my first one. Yeah, so I'm, I'm very proud of my relationship with Wayman. We worked together at Steel Case for years, so. So this book is really, I read the book, and uh, this is an incredible story. My connection, you know, I grew up in, in Central Ohio, and uh, I had another force pulling at me uh, down there. Um, and I was the, the youngest of four boys, and uh, followed, if I followed my dad and my brother, I may have been at that other school, and uh, I picked Michigan. And I picked Michigan uh, 100% because 
of the education. Um, and I love Bo Schembeck. I mean, in fact, when I did my recruiting, Jim does this today, I think we spent, you know, our 45 minutes to an hour, and then I spent seven hours with the, the head of the finance department. This guy was fantastic, Jim Pitchler, who's passed away now, was really kind of the father of investment banking as, as it became. Uh, Sandy Robertson, who's a huge alum of ours in San Francisco, says this was his favorite professor on campus. So going to Michigan was uh, a question for me because I was one of those players that was a tweener, you know. I was uh, big enough to be a linebacker, but not fast enough. Fast enough to be the center, but not big enough. And uh, Bo talked me into it, and I came, and I never regretted uh, any part of it. I ended up being on the demonstration team my career. I played, I played in games to make it worth it, but uh, I, I'll tell you my most significant accomplishment. I never missed a practice in four years, spring, winter. Uh, never missed one practice. I broke, you know, things in my hands. Uh, had, to, had the kind of challenges we all do, but I was really proud of that, that I, that I never missed a practice. And it says a little bit about kind of the background kind of person I am in business. I'm a very competitive guy. I wish I had Jim's outward energy because I have to kind of win uh, in a more quiet way, um, and, and I'm very proud of that. But I want to make, if I could please, an important connection to Buzz's comments. Could I do that now? Absolutely. So listen, guys, you know, when I came in as athletic director, that wasn't my path. I had retired as CEO of Steelcase, and I got a call to come and, and maybe serve a month in the job. I won't tell you the whole story, but I stayed 18 months, and uh, Jack Harbaugh was a coach when I was a freshman in Michigan, and I called him and said, is there any chance that I can get Jim uh, to talk to me? He said, yeah, I'm sure you can, you know. I go to the team, and some of the staff that's here will remember this. The seniors left the room because it was spring, and they were gone, and we split into freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, and I had you guys go away, tell me what you wanted in a coach. And I came back the next week and said, you know, I'm looking at kind of different kinds of people. I tried to explain the process I would go through as a business person. So I said, well, imagine I got a, I got a guy named Sam, Tom, they're sitting just like you, and I said, Jim, the whole group stood up. When the name Jim came out, that whole room stood up. I'm getting goosebumps telling you this. Because they had heard the rumors that I was looking for Jim Harbaugh. And what a gift that was, because as you know, there's lots of opportunities. And no one loves the University of Michigan and you more than that coach. And so I'm really proud of that. And at the time, while we finished that session, I asked the players, I go, hey, we got to look at Adidas or Nike. When I said Nike, they stood up. We were Adidas at the time. I said, let's, let's talk about it. And uh, so they gave me a lot of feedback uh, about it. And so we designed the uniforms. I think, Jim, you were just arriving. In fact, it was, because he gets Michael Jordan to agree to put the jump man on. And if you get upstairs and you look at President Ford's number, it's 48, 48. Next to Willis is 61. When you see them in the photo, the way it's facing, the way you're facing their numbers, the president has a four in 48, and the top of his four, the font of that is canted towards Willis. And it always moved me because I knew the story. The book's called Black and Blue. You'll hear about it upstairs. And that, that they cared about so much, each other so much, that number four said, I'm wearing that number but I'm in charge of my teammate. I'm pointing to him. It's, it says I'm a 48, but I, my eyes are gazed who's on my right and who's on my left. And I said, we gotta carry that tradition forward in the design of every uniform. You're gonna, I want you to tell the story. When you see that number to other students, other, other uh, classmates, and you say, that's, that's wired into Nike uniforms because of that. So, uh, and uh, Phil Knight called me after all this got done. He knew about the Jordan thing. 
and he was so moved by the background of that font. So I, you know, I don't have anything to do with the university anymore. Things get modern and they get changed, but I hope, I pray to God that we never let that go because of what it meant to who we are as men. Thank you, sir.